Uh, one and a quarter. One and a quarter? It's what? an early Rawlings. Yeah. <laughs> How you been? I haven't been here a long time. Not too bad. Not too bad. It's been like three or four months since I've been here. Yeah, I haven't seen you in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> well, the weather hasn't been so great. Yeah, every, I was planning on coming a lot, and every uh, time I look at the weather, it's rain was potential or. This is the famous album. This little scrapbook was the scene of a 1921 World Series ticket stub. Oh, awesome. But now it's just an album. Yeah. <laughs> back of the album with a bunch of stuff. Oh man, that's awesome. I have um, I have um, boxes of, of those. I just- Okay, like I'm, a cabinet card or the CDB albums? Yeah, exactly. I just, um, I've been selling them on the ephemera page. And Is that Facebook or something yeah. or what's that? Okay. So. Um, so today I'm in like hesitation mode on whether I want to sell them at the market because like honestly I just don't do it well. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, if you have an outlet for it. Have a good day, right? But I'm saying that to say that they're in my front seat and if you want to look at them, you can. Okay. Yeah. Let me cool. Know. All right, we'll do. Thank you. This uh, CDB's tin types, you know, but probably no. Um, the Civil War people are probably sold already. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. How are you? How you been? What's going on, brother? This is still emptying out my car two hours later. Yeah. Yeah, well, at least, at least it's worth it emptying it because they're going to come now. Yeah, it's a nice thing. I mean, also, there's no wind. Yesterday was just. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't leave the house no, yesterday. No, it was the day before. Well, well, yeah, the day before too, but yesterday was bad too. Yes, the day before was like brutal freezing. Man. Yeah. It's so funny because February is way better than March so far. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I said that we were going to get killed in March and beginning of April. Yeah. Within like five minutes. That's true. It'll look better. <laughs> Let me get a second. What do you think on this batch? Well, I didn't expect you to pick, to pick out the $2 ones. So let me tell you about these. Okay. The soccer ones, how are you? The soccer ones, uh, I'm selling for 10, but I can, if you're if you're open to it, I can sell them for five. Okay. Yeah, we do with that. Okay. Yeah. So hold that. Okay. And these are eight here. Okay. So it's so 40 bucks. That works, that appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. This is the first week I didn't lay them all out. I'm like, doesn't really make a ton of sense. Yeah, yeah. If you're getting good money on I mean, a live out, like, well, take up table space. The only thing is, like, if it's a small difference, I don't have to worry about shipping and all that stuff. Yeah, that's true yeah. too. Yeah. Although they're not too fragile, so it's not a big, you know, fried shipping's not too tough. It's not glass, but still, exactly. you never know. Yeah. Cool. Anyway, good. To I'll see swing you through. Same here, man. See ya. Right. Hey, everybody. So in this video, I hit my outdoor flea market briefly. Then I'm hitting an indoor dealer right now who I buy from a lot, pick up some great early sports equipment from him. So stay tuned, you'll see what I pick up. At the end of the video, I'm gonna take you through an evolution of the baseball glove from the first glove in the 19th century to more modern era. Uh, so stay tuned and hope you guys enjoy. Oh, oh sorry, Try throwing stuff at you. Not hours, I think they help everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna be out a lot of money. What's that? Stop bear. Right, so I told him he could drop. Don't be careful with the bear. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's a fidget bear. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Funny because I would say, uh, yeah, almost makes sense in my big baby's bat. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but I think. Yeah, I like the medicine ball. Unload it and yeah. unload it and yeah. then go put it in there. Yeah. Well, I can only follow you over. Right. And we could put um, the bear in my car. It's fairly possible. Yeah. 
barely possible. Yeah. But the only thing is, we got to get all the stuff out of here. Let's make a little pile over here. Yep. We'll figure it out. I was gonna say yeah with that with that covering, right? Neat. Yeah, and that sole on the back. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty neat. Yeah, yeah, you don't see them too often. <sighs> pretty cool. Is that a lid for it? What is this? A teapot. Bob, just curiosity. What do you? There's something in this. I'll grab it out. But what do you think of all the trophies? Uh, this is like gold in there. I didn't. I didn't pull that out. Yeah, we needed to get these checked, and we were actually going to get these checked for silver content. But oh, okay. uh, if you wanted to buy them, um, they would be. Oh, it's 150 for the pair. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Yeah. How was your morning? Oh, uh, that up. Charlie, I don't know if you would have seen, but uh, officially, ready, another state change. Oh, why? Yeah. House cleanouts. Oh, the bobbleheads. I assume what you have in there is what you have. Yeah, there's okay. all it's kinds a, of parts and pieces. Yeah, it's interesting. There's not a, like, yeah. see the Eagles have, but there's no body. No body, yep. Okay. Nope. So we don't like it. Yeah. Okay. There's a couple tickets. Here's some, uh, like, yearbooks and stuff in this pile, if I want to take a look. Did you look at that? Oops, sorry. Okay. No problem. Okay, John. Oh, okay. What do you, do you have a price of mine on the, the bobblehead group? Uh, yeah, I can work that out. Yeah. Okay. Like, uh, for a 50 bucks on everything, the, no, the Saints Nodder was sold. That's okay. Yeah, no worries. No problem. Everything, uh, everything else is 50 bucks. Yeah, I'll do that. All right. And what are you thinking on the, uh, the Heartlands? Uh, you know, 600 bucks. 600 bucks? All the Heartlands. Okay. I'm going to take a closer look at that. And that's, that's actually, obviously, a very good price. Yeah. Well, I got happy super. I know you're backing stuff up when you're done if you can totally me up. Okay. Yeah, no rush. We gotta get you the bobbleheads. Yeah. Do you yep. want the Heartlands? Yeah. Probably gonna pass on the Heartlands. That's, That's definitely a good price. Okay. But, um, All right. I just wanted to be sure. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. No, no rush, man. Yeah, so I'm uh, the, behind this tote, the, the trophies and that pile there. Uh, so 150 on the trophies, you okay with that? Yep. Uh, <laughs> it was a Penn State Temple. Uh, five? Yep. Okay. Can I put it in there? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, 
Five? Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it back. <laughs> yeah, I want to get at some point you guys today. 20? Okay. Thank you. Mm, feels better. <laughs> I feel much better now. He enjoyed it more than you. I yeah, know he did. 25? Yeah, I'll do that. That's a world's fair one, too. Right? Yeah, yeah. They don't care who they shot. No. 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 <laughs> we didn't bring it all in here. That truck out there full. Yeah. Free with your purchase. Thank you. <laughs> I was going to try to pin that up, pair that up with a pin at some point. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, 30 bucks, alright? Yes, sir. Bob, yeah, I like this. Your yeah, it's a clean. Fifteen one. each. A uh, hundred on that. Hundred. Yeah, it's so clean. Very yeah. clean. I don't think it's been used. It's got no. a little bit of foxing in the middle. I'm probably gonna pass on that at that price, just because I mean it's that's that's probably what I would ask on it. Uh, okay. Yeah. That's maybe, fine. Maybe Seth would want it too. Oh. I'll let him. Yeah. Did you see that one? Very clean glove. I don't think it's been used. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right though. I think that's about where it's at. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna hold this up. All yeah. right, we're gonna have an auction. Seth, Keith, you ready? <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> Who wants this for for sixty dollars? I'll, I'll I'll put the opening bid. At Are 60, you in yeah. at sixty? Yeah. Do yeah. I do I have to? sold? Okay. Oh, yeah. All right, I'm good. not gonna do that. To you guys. <laughs> fucking around with you. I've been up since yesterday. Uh, true sports. Uh, thirty bucks. Yep. Oh, this is the early, <laughs> early Rawlings. Yeah. Uh, one and a quarter. One and a quarter? It's We're, an early Rawlings. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll do it for the full lab. Yeah, it's one and a quarter on that guy. Quarter. I didn't see a maker on that one. No. Unless I missed no. it. Uh, 40? Yeah. And 100 on the medicine ball. Okay. Right. And, then, and then 50 on the bottom of that. And then, and then a 50. Yeah. You're late. <laughs> oh, I've been talking to him about it. Yeah, you know, I, yeah. Well, Ask his wife. I bet you, I bet you're about 10 years late. Well, I was going to say, yeah, I'm going to bring up the shoes. Yeah. Up the shoes. Was I sold them immediately. I flipped them. It was like a caseload of, like, dead stock kid shoes. Yeah. Like, oh, 30s. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
whether it's a trophy collector, a sports collector, or a decorator, people love these large, ornate trophies. So again, it was 640 total. I think it was 150 for that pair, which I think was a steal. Three gloves, beautiful Bill Doak Rawlings. Here's the Bill Doak label. I mean, this thing is soft, supple. I don't have to clean that at all. Then there's a pair of earlier gloves. This one's probably like a 1910 to 1920. Couldn't see a maker on this one. I have to clean that one up. Sometimes after I clean it, condition it a bit, you might be able to make out the maker, but at this point I can't see anything. This one's an earlier full web Rawlings, an early uh, Rawlings tag, a little worn on the tag. Say probably 1900 to 1910. Definitely a nice glove. You got to probably clean that one up a bit as well. Probably catcher's mask. I would say 1930s to 40s. This was, I think, a true sport brand. Somebody's a price sticker on there, $95. I didn't pay that. I think it was like $30 for that. Uh, these are very cool. I've, I think I've had one of these before, but you don't see them too often. So this is a medicine ball. I won't even be able to pick it up with one hand here. <laughs> Not really much to grip on it. But medicine balls that have that figure eight baseball style design. Definitely rare. Definitely desirable. Uh, this one's Typhoon. It says medicine ball here. I would say this is probably like a $400 piece. Not too exciting here, but a little Penn State Temple ticket stub and parking pass, 1940. He just threw this in for me, a little tin litho baseball. I'll pair that with a button or pinback button that would have had this originally. And then pretty rare pair of umpire cleats with the uh, like the shield off. It's like lead inside there just to protect from like past balls, high top style. It's like the heel says, does it say Essex Magic on the heel? I've never had them before. I've had umpire cleats, not that specific high top style. So I will uh, do a little research on them. All right, so here's the rest of the stuff in the grip that I bought for 640. Uh, so and you probably saw when I was buying the bobbleheads, you're probably thinking, why the heck did I buy them? And that's a, a very valid question because uh, these are all damaged parts and pieces. Uh, none of them are complete, except for these guys on the end, but they still have some flaws. But I come across a lot of bobbleheads that are damaged. And for example, like the Mets, I mean, if I have a, a body where the head is completely destroyed, I could you know, use the head for that one. And same for the Yankees. Uh, my dad can actually do a lot of restoration for me. He might be able to fix this Yankees and make it sellable. Obviously, it's going to be far from perfect. Uh, <laughs> funny thing was, when they bought, the two guys I bought the collection from, when they bought the uh, collection, they said the Mets head was on the New York Giants football body. So that's an interesting uh, combination there. Uh, this is a relatively rare one. That's an Eagles kissing nodder bobblehead. It would have had a magnet in the cheek where the cheerleader would be clicking to the magnet. That's probably why I broke in that spot. That's a more of a generic kisser body. So probably could you know, get that you know, painted to complete that, but it's probably not worth the effort. Uh, but these are, I think I paid $50 for the group. I should be able to sell these three, baseball player, the auto racer, and the uh, another little baseball player mini. Then it's a magnet on the base. I'll be able to put them in my antique shop or maybe online for uh, totally more than 50. So I'll do okay with that. And the rest I'll just hang on to for, like I said, parts and pieces. And then three pennants. Now there are two New York World's Fair, 1940. This one has the cool chain stitched like souvenir embroidery on there. Great patriotic, God bless America graphic on that one. 1939 New York World's Fair. And then a uh, Carsonia Park, which I think is a park in Reading, a gentleman told me out at the, out at the antique market. So anyway, pretty cool group, uh, especially the first group that I showed in the video here. All right, everybody, as promised, I'm gonna take you through a pictorial evolution of the baseball glove. I'm going to put some values at the first few gloves. After that, the value becomes so dependent on brand, condition, player model that it doesn't really make sense to give you a price range. To start off, the first baseball glove was introduced in the mid-1870s, and it was a fingerless baseball glove as the one shown here. 
Uh, these were initially worn by catchers, weren't widely worn at the beginning. People didn't really consider it mainly to wear a glove, but then they did catch on, very, very rarely ever show up. This is the only glove style that I'm gonna show that I've never handled. I got in a bidding war for one years ago, but if one ever does come up for sale, it's gonna bring five figures, probably ten to $15,000. Very, very scarce glove. Next, in the 1880s, uh, was introduced the webless glove, or also called the workman glove. Uh, this one, shown in the photo, is called a webless crescent, uh, given that crescent moon-shaped pad in the palm area. The earlier version of the workman glove would have additional leather tips at the end of the fingers. Those are higher value. In general, the workman gloves, like the one I show in the image here, are going to bring in the two to $4,000 range. But the leather tipped earlier workman gloves you know, are gonna approach 10,000 if they come up. Then we have a crescent full web glove. These came to play in the 1890s. Again, they had that same crescent moon shaped pad at the palm. These, depending on condition, depending on brand, are generally gonna bring in the 500 to $1,000 range. Maybe some a little bit more for high condition gloves. These are not to be confused with a later softball style glove that has a crescent pad those gloves have very little value and either unscrupulous sellers or sellers just don't know the difference might list this as a crescent glove don't confuse the two these gloves you'll see the crescent pad is on the palm but it extends up through the pinky that is never the case with a, a true crescent pad glove you'll see in the earlier true crescent glove that pad goes from the thumb through the palm the softball glove the pad goes from the palm up through the pinky moving forward we have the full web glove and this is the glove I bought in the video here these were used from about 1900 to the teens now this one is a Rawlings model so for a full web glove you have a piece of leather between the thumb and index finger that goes basically all the way down to the the palm of the glove Next in the evolution of gloves, we have a one inch web. Uh, again, this web, about a one inch strip of leather running between the thumb and forefinger with a gap between that and the palm. This is also a glove that I picked up in this video. The one inch web gloves are basically used from the teens to the 20s. Next up, in the 20s and 30s, you have an assortment of different webbing between the thumb and forefinger. This one shown here is called a tunnel loop. You'll see the, the lacing between the thumb and forefinger goes between a little tunnel of leather on the thumb and forefinger. That's why it's called a tunnel loop. Then another glove I've bought in this video, 1940s era glove. You'll see it has more of a leather strapping between the thumb and forefinger. This one is the last in the evolution of gloves to be called a split finger glove. And by that, you'll see between the pinky and the other fingers, there's no attachment, no lacing between the fingers. You'll see the next one, that changes. Moving in the 1950s, we have this Draper and Maynard Richie Ashburn glove. You'll see the lacing between the fingers. Again, no longer called a split finger glove. On to the 1960s, you have a variety of style webbing between the uh, fingers there. This happens to be a, a Spalding Richie Dick Allen glove. And then going forward 70s through the 90s, there is not gonna be a dramatic change in gloves at that point uh, during those time periods. The one on the left is a 1970s Matty Alou glove. The one on the right is a Ken Griffey Jr. glove. I hope you enjoyed this little run through the history of baseball gloves. I'm gonna show you what I sold in this video and thanks for watching. Please subscribe.